Battle of the Network shows. Join Rick Brooks and Mike Kogel as they explore the TV of the 70s and 80s through hand-picked episodes of their favorite and not-so-favorite series. Welcome to Battle of the Network shows for another bonus episode. Uh, this is Mike. I'm here with Rick. Hey, everyone. And today we're going to kind of discuss something we were talking about in our Facebook group. And we'll go ahead and remind people again of the Facebook group, Battle of the Network Shows, the group where we discuss all sorts of things related to the show and the show's era. And we've had some good discussions there. So I posed this question and we got a, a lot of good responses to it. In the same week, there were articles about the possibility of both ALF and Facts of Life reboots. And I was wondering what other shows people might want to see from our era, rebooted or remade, or... I feel like reboot's a bad term. I feel like there are two types of shows. Mm -hmm. There's the remake, like the new Magnum P.I. is a remake of Magnum. You're right. Oh, and Hawaii Five-0 and MacGyver. And then there's the return. Mm -hmm. Something like the brief return of Roseanne, or, you know, where it's the same characters and the Murphy same Brown. actors. Murphy Brown's coming back, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a continuation of what you had before. Mm-hmm. So this seems more in the remake category with Alf being a, maybe an exception because Alf himself would still be there. So most of these seem more like, yeah, uh, re-remakes. Alf, uh, let me just throw this out there. I, I brought this up with my brother, and we were trying to figure out who would be a good foil. If you can't get Max right, which seems pretty plausible that you yeah, wouldn't be able yeah. to get to Max right. What might actor might make a good foil for Alf? Mm-hmm. And I don't remember how, we might have just been listing people, but <laughs> for some reason the name Ray Liotta stuck. <laughs> Alf and Ray Liotta. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you can see Ray Liotta losing his temper. Yes, yes, I can see that. Um, yeah. I think my brother's like fascinated by his the weirdness of his career. Okay. You know that he's, of course, in a lot of good movies and in a lot of like straight to DVD yeah. kind of Tons of them, it seems like. Yeah, <laughs> and and that he's doing like there's like that uh, Shantrix or something. It's a, like a nicotine, uh, like a mm. something that helps people get quit smoking. And okay. he does. The, he's in a commercial, but it's just a testimonial, like anyone else. He's just like, yeah, I'm Ray, and I quit smoking with oh, this geez. product. And <laughs> wow, <laughs> but it's Ray Liotta, <laughs> <laughs> and I guess his his NBC show is ending. So yeah. uh, so that would be interesting. <laughs> I think I would watch that show. Yeah, I, I would definitely give it a shot. I'll say that. I don't know that we need a new ALF show. I don't know if we need a remake of The Facts of Life. No, that one seems very questionable. And, to me. and Leonardo DiCaprio and Jessica Biel are involved in producing like, it? Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Well, I guess maybe it's, it's always been a dream project of theirs. I guess. Yeah, I don't I don't see much point in, in that. But Anyway, we'll share with you some of the ones we got in the group and, may, and maybe our thoughts on those. Uh, and I'm just going to use people's first names here. It sounds good. To protect the innocent. Yes. Jim had a really good suggestion, head of the class. Mm -hmm. That seems like an easy one to do. Yeah. I, I like that idea, and I think um, that's commercially viable. Uh, yeah. And you could, you could probably see it maybe something on like a Disney channel or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think we, we've seen like some um, some school shows lately. But a lot of the school shows are, are like more twisted in, in the sense that like like there's one right now with um, the AP Bio or something where you get the gifted kids, but like the the terrible teacher, oh, like the yeah. guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It seems like the bad teacher is kind of a trend. But yeah. we need to go back to like a good like charismatic teacher. Yeah, you know somebody that could you know inspire the kids or whatever. And you'd have like the misfit kids sort of learn their foibles or whatever and the thing about that is it naturally leads to a cast a diverse cast which would be yes. very popular these days and you could, you could very easily see that happening you know who i could see uh doing this uh i don't the, ray the, liotta the teacher not ray liotta <laughs> i think i would consider that but you need like a maybe an aging uh star you know kind of uh a little bit weathered yeah somebody that would have the a little wisdom but bring a light touch and be able to do wacky things with the, the kids sometimes. Uh -huh. How about Jim Belushi? What's he doing these days? Boy, that's a good... That, he would be, be. No, streetwise. He'd yeah. be the streetwise content, uh, contrast to the, the book smart... Uh, Which is kind of like Howard Hessman's kids. character was sort of like a... Uh, he had some element of that to him, didn't he? Yeah, Like I he think was so. like a, a ex-hippie or something? Yeah, he was definitely an ex-hippie. I'm trying to remember, like, he must have had 
some kind of an intellectual uh, credentials yeah. to get that gig, but uh, yeah. Hey, we might uh, want to save this. We might be talking about that show in a, in a oh, future podcast. That's true, yeah. So, but that that was a good choice. No, I think, I th- Jim Belushi. I, that's interesting. Yeah, I could see that, and he's been doing you know some interesting character work lately. He was, yeah. he of could, course, in that HBO show, uh, David Simon yeah, so he show. Could, Totally throw it away by being on a sitcom. Yeah. And then he was in uh, uh, he was in the Twin Peaks continuation. He may be holding out for a continuation of According to Jim. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's Still According to Jim. Mark my words. Jim. Get that we'll, cast back together. We'll be hearing about that soon, I guarantee it. Yeah. One way or another. So, yeah, I, I think that was a good choice. Yeah. And the, I, I mean, can see that happening. The original show had a, a diverse cast. Right. But it wasn't like... It's remembered. It's got some cachet, but it wasn't like a classic show or anything no. that you people wouldn't want to tamper with. So I think that would probably make it a good candidate for this kind of thing. Yeah, and I think you could have like diverse, not just like gender and, and uh, ethnicity, but also obviously like in, in that kind of environment, someone like on the spectrum or something. You could maybe address that where probably Arvid or somebody maybe was. A, yeah, <laughs> some right. character was fit that, but you know yeah. they didn't address it. But maybe uh, they could now. Yeah, maybe when Jim Parsons figures out this <laughs> ending the Big Bang Bang Theory is a bad idea, <laughs> uh, he could be the teacher. His triumphant return yeah. <laughs> to network television. Yeah. So next, a uh, friend of the show, Amy, said Sledgehammer, which I thought was an interesting choice. Yeah, that's and a good one. I mean, that that had a pretty short run. Yeah, and a lot of people might not even remember it. Yeah, I, I think you in the comments. Suggest said kind of what I was thinking too. Like, would that be able to fly in today's culture as much? Yeah, like a, a total over the top fascist, uh, right? <laughs> cop, gun loving cop. Yeah. yeah, that's all. Yeah, there's a lot of buttons that's pushing. Yeah, I mean, it was satirizing that. But yeah, it's tough to these days. Yeah, it's tough these days. Yeah. I'll bet you could you could definitely do a funny uh, cop show though. I mean, yeah, it's not like Police Squad and sledgehammer and, and brooklyn 99 have done everything there is to do with that i think so right yeah car 54 did everything yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that yeah that was good and uh your cousin kevin suggested the equalizer and the rockford files yeah now equalizer i don't that's that's one that that we maybe need to revisit for the show because i yeah. have, didn't watch much of that but right i mean it's got a movie version right now that's actually had a sequel yeah amazingly so now the concept seems like it could definitely work again yeah, I am not obviously not beholden to the original, but I'd be offended that they remade it. Right, he's he's basically a vigilante for hire, right? Yeah, yeah, he's got like connections and yeah. like a background of being an operative and right. all this kind of stuff. Yeah, should it be a another movie? Is Denzel Washington? Yeah, should, would the TV one? Do you think it should be a another old British guy, or could maybe be a woman? Mm, I don't know. If you make it be a woman, then it's a totally different show, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I don't even watch the original. <laughs> okay. But I mean, I guess uh, you could do that. Yeah. But would that be, be enough of the equalizer? I just don't know enough to know if that... I don't know. I guess as long as she's equalizing. Yeah, I guess so. As long as there's <laughs> enough equalizing. That, that's the appeal, right? See, see, my take on things like like with Ghostbusters, I've always said yeah. that like, I don't have a problem with the, the all-female Ghostbusters. I think it's silly to criticize it because yeah. why not? I mean, you're not gonna if you're not going to improve the original, you might as well do something that gives it a totally different twist on it. Right. Now, something like The Equalizer, it's not quite as iconic as Ghostbusters, so there's probably stuff you could do with the original gimmick. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it was his name, McCall. I don't know exactly remember what his background was. And no. It might be, you might have to change it quite a bit to, to gender change it, but... Yeah. I wouldn't like gender changing it just for the sake of gender changing it, right, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But you probably could, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that would be a whole other show, though, because if you think about it, the, the concept of, like, men... Hiring a woman to get like revenge or, or like mm. to, to settle st- stuff, and, and and that's not something that we're used to. No, maybe they don't. I, I don't know how that show worked exactly. Like, were they hiring him directly, or were they hiring him through a conduit? Yeah, I I can't intelligently comment on uh, yeah on it, even though I've been trying for the last couple of minutes. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Rockford? That... Rockford is one that they perpetually seem to be trying. Yeah. Boy, I feel like that's a tough... You need somebody that's that's charismatic enough to, to build a show around. Like, I would love to see another, like, cool detective show. Yeah. I mean, assuming it's not a period piece, it's set now, yeah, you could definitely do a, a Southern California kind of detective show. But yeah. with any of these kind of shows, you would need a, uh, a charismatic person to play the lead role. In this case, by naming it Rockford, you're, you're begging for people to compare uh, whoever to James Garner. Right. I would rather just see a new character in that instance. I think, I think it would be very tough to... 
to duplicate uh, James Garner. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff you can do with the concept, like, you know, sort of a more rumpled guy that doesn't always win and, right. you know, isn't necessarily the bravest guy in the room. You could do that, but, boy, calling it Rockford Files would be tough. That would be tough. You need, you need Glenn Larson to, to rip off his own show, <laughs> right. but call it something else. Yeah. <laughs> And that brings up the, the Magnum one, which we haven't seen, of course. Huh. Just in the YouTube preview. And I'm going to watch an episode or two just to see. It did The one thing I, I, I didn't in general like what I was seeing just because it seemed like, you know, I don't know, there are lots of explosions. And yeah. Uh, I didn't, they made Higgins a woman, which I, I don't mind necessarily, but it mm-hmm. seemed like there's a possibility of like a romantic entanglement there, yeah. which just seems of like course. a counter to the whole. <laughs> right. <laughs> idea of that but on the other hand they were really pushing in the preview the idea of them friends Mm -hmm. this being about these friends and of course we talked a lot about the show that being part of the appeal of the show right again it seems a little unnecessary there was an idea floating around long for a long time it was like his daughter Mm -hmm. a show about his daughter i I think that would be more interesting an actual continuation than right just taking the concept again but i agree with all that now, having said Glenn that, Larson. <laughs> the show might actually do well. I mean, that Hawaii Five O is is still right. But now Hawaii Five O, boy, that that show was on a long time. But it was yeah. like the locations, and, and and I mean, Jack Lord is not necessarily a distinctively memorable TV personality right. in the same way that Tom Selleck was. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to compare to Tom Selleck. So, I, I think this one has a tough uh, tough road ahead of it. Yeah, I believe some of the people from Hawaii Five O and MacGyver are involved in it. Hmm. Which maybe is not a promising sign. <laughs> I haven't seen the new MacGyver either. So. Yeah, me neither. And, and yeah. in Rockford, like over the years, like Vince Vaughn was attached to like a, a feature film version of it. I think. Yeah. Dermot Mulroney was was it Dermot Mulroney that was attached to a TV version of it for a while. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, nothing against him, but he's no he's no James Garner. No. So <laughs> he is rumpled. Yeah, that that's a tough one. Was Mark Ruffalo attached? <laughs> Something like that at some point. Mark Ruffalo was, uh, I know Mark Ruffalo had talked about Columbo. Oh, Columbo, yeah. Columbo, yeah. The, which would be interesting. That like, would be. Like, I can actually see that. Yeah, yeah. That would be tough, though. To, that would be. But I would, I would probably give that one a shot. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, like, a lot of the, the problem with these is if you have, I, I think it's a better idea to take a concept that, that didn't work or a show that wasn't on as long. Yeah. But if you have, like, such an iconic superstar in the, in the title role, you, it, it's very difficult. Like a, I would rather see a movie than mm. than a whole series, I guess. Yeah, it'd be t- it'd be tough. It'd be yeah, tough. but it still would be. I'm trying to think of actors who maybe. I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be James Garner like, but I'm trying to think of James Garner like actors, and there aren't a lot. Yeah, well, we there's a problem in general is we don't have enough cool guy actors around to to fill the roles we have, let alone putting right. them in old ro- roles. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know if unless you're George Clooney, probably. Well, no, I guess there are a number of lead male actors who are in their 40s or 50s that. Still get movies made, so he could maybe do that. I don't know how James old James Garner was then, but I mean he was in his well, he was, was middle about aged twenty then. years after he became <laughs> like a star. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like maybe early forties. Yeah. So John suggested a wise guy, uh, which is one I think I've seen a little more of that than you have. But. Yeah. Now this is a good example. There's like you know a show that was uh, brilliantly was heralded as being brilliant but mm-hmm. never really caught on yeah. with the general public and, and a concept that you could definitely use again and right. a concept that's arguably already been duplicated. Yeah, so the idea of that show, if you haven't didn't see it, was an undercover, I think, cop. It might have been FBI. And each season was sort of a, or at least started out like the whole season was a one of these cases where he was undercover and then there'd be a new one each Right, so season. it was like different arcs. Yeah. And that was at a time when shows weren't really doing that kind of storytelling. Yeah. So it, it stood out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that seems like a good, the good kind of, kind of concept that you could do this with. And Right. I uh, mean, he, even in the show's run, like, the lead actor left for a while, and they brought in a different lead actor yeah. in the same function. So. And now you could even see, as, as like, the, the concept of short seasons becomes more of a thing. Like, before, like, maybe five, ten years ago, you would say, well, pay cable. And then, like, five years ago, you would say, well, basic, like, something like TNT or FX. Yeah. And now, you know, who knows? You could even do that probably on a, on a major network. You could pull that off as an event, 13-episode series. Yeah. Get, like, a, a high-profile star that, that mm-hmm. doesn't make the full commitment and then just do it again the next year. Yeah. Although, I think that would probably be more likely, like, an FX or a TNT or something. Yeah, or I think AMC. that would fit in, or, or Netflix, or, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe the Stephen J. Cannell <laughs> estate is listening, and uh, <laughs> yeah. w- w- won't pay 
Kevin or, or sorry, John or any of us for that, but uh, uh, not a bad idea. Jim had another, another one, <laughs> a short-lived one, I Married Dora. Yes. Seems very timely. Yeah. Uh, touch on uh, <laughs> immigration and yeah, and uh, all kinds of things. Now, th- this is a very, very short uh, sitcom. I think it was on ABC. Yeah. And hey, you know what? I'd love to see somebody with the guts to try that. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's a lot of different directions you could go with that, mm-hmm. and who, who knows how it'd end up. But. Right, you could really stir the pot, and you know, have it be a same-sex couple. Oh, yeah, but uh, and so it, and if you don't know that show, that was basically a guy married a woman so she could well didn't get deported. Yeah, yeah. And she, was she the housekeeper? I think she, she was some, yeah. domestic, uh, yeah, yeah, worker of his. And uh, I know it was McCormick from Hard Man, Castle and McCormick. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, see, that's an example of something like you're basically saying, hey, this is a concept that could work again, yeah. but it's not going to turn people off by taking a beloved show and, and ruining it. So, yeah, right. might as well give it a shot. Yeah, call it I Married Dora the Explorer. Yeah. Be, well, that, that could uh, be in all kinds of <laughs> situations. And then the last one uh, from our commenters from uh, Dan, as usual, <laughs> going obscure, at least to me, The Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle Hour, starring Hanson. Yeah, well, I don't remember the Hudson Brothers de- Razzle Dazzle Hour. I think that was what mid seventies, maybe. Yeah, but uh, variety show, you know, kind of the Saturday morning deal. Okay, who are the yeah, Hudson I, Brothers? I, I never saw it. <laughs> well, actually, it was it's like uh, Goldie Hawn's husband, Bill Hudson, uh, and uh, Kate Hudson's father. Uh, okay, uh, that kind of deal. So I can't speak very much about. I've only read about that show, but hey, why not? And and Hanson, as I think I might have said in the comments, uh, uh, Hanson yeah. seems like uh, they seem like good sports, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether Dan was serious or not. Uh, they might actually go for something like that. Right. Uh, but those are things that were like staples of, of television, like uh, variety, family acts. Don't see these kind of things anymore. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking up the Hudson Brothers now. They had some hits So You Are a Star, Rendezvous, Lonely School Year, and Help Wanted. And there's a picture of them on Captain Kangaroo TV. CBS Saturday mornings from 74 to 75. That would explain why I didn't see it. Guest starred on The Love Boat. And, oh, the the Razzle Dazzle series is on DVD. Or was. Hmm. From Video Service Corp. Uh, hmm. That doesn't sound very... (laughs) Uh, I wonder if that's legit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Well, that's interesting. kind of concept could could probably work. I mean, people seem to have shied away from variety, but... Yeah. Why not? Yeah, Hanson seems game for. Yeah. Put it on, uh, put it on a cable channel or something. So yeah. would you call it the Hanson Brothers Razzle Dazzle? <laughs> I guess you would. Yeah, I guess well, the, the Jonas's brothers. are still too, too cool for that. Probably. Yeah. 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 Maybe in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> we might eventually get them back. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, what what I could actually see uh, is is something where they they throw together a bunch of Disney Channel stars and yeah. And do something like that, like as a limited thing on on there or something. But right, but you never know. It, it just didn't seem like. I mean, there's there's something in general. Like, why don't we reboot Saturday mornings? You right. Know? Yeah. Let's have some programming on Saturday mornings. Period on networks. Yeah. Uh, other than EI uh, shows, so yeah, that'd be interesting just to see somebody give that a shot. Yeah. And you wrote some down, I think. I did. I, I had some that that I would uh, like, and I mean, not all these I want to go into great detail on because yeah. um, some of these we haven't talked about, but I think we will. But some of these we have talked about, and, and it might kind of surprise you. Mm-hmm. One I thought uh, would, that I would personally like to see, yeah, is uh, Tales of the Gold Monkey. Uh-huh. That was, uh, you know, th- that came around in the, in the wake of the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark success. Yeah, it had a, a now disgraced uh, star, mm-hmm. and the complete run did come out on DVD eventually. I loved this show as a kid. It was had you know just kind of like an adventure show, an old fashioned show. It was it was a period piece. Yeah, with intrigue and and sort of like um, really trying to go for for some of the stuff that Raiders of the Lost Mar- Mo- Ark movie did. Yeah. Personally, there's probably no way this would get made today, but I would like to see it, and I think you could definitely do it. Uh, the show had a, like a limited run, but it was good. When I watched some episodes a couple of years ago, I thought it held up. It wasn't perfect, but it was it was fun, and I think we could use more shows that are just pure like fun adventure. And I always like um, like shows set in that that era. You know, yeah. talking about like kind of World War II area, pre-war kind of uh, right, area. Yeah. So that's something I would like to see. That's an interesting. And I think you, you could put like a, a reasonably unknown in there. And like the original series had uh, Roddy McDowell in like in a prominent supporting role, gets That's some right. veteran character actors to surround him, get like a you know young guy as the lead, and go from there. Yeah, I like that show a lot too. 
yeah. when I was a kid. I haven't seen it since, but, you know, and that was from uh, Belisaria, right? From I, I believe it was, yeah. He certainly got cachet at CBS. Yeah, with The yeah. NCIS franchise. So. Yeah. Uh, it might take, like, a streaming service to take a chance on a show that that's not in yeah. the present. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't have fantasy elements. And, and I, I could right. see people picking that apart, but, yeah. hey, I, I would like to see it get a shot. Yeah. You could maybe add some fantasy elements to that. I mean, yeah. not full on, but, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark level. Right, right. Sort of magic exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to talk about, uh, or just want to mention one. This might surprise you. Uh, Miami Vice. Miami Vice has already had a movie uh, mm-hmm. attempt, and I'd be very surprised if somebody isn't already thinking about doing another Miami Vice. Yeah. Maybe not Miami Vice specifically with the same characters, but but just sort of that, that setting. Or one thing I don't think we have today is, is shows that are, I think would be a good antidote for some of the, the darker uh, crime dramas we have now. Uh-huh. How about a show that that has its share of darkness, but is more geared towards like the stylishness of it? That doesn't mean you don't have to have substance. Yeah. But you get some charismatic stars. Maybe not even Miami, but just somewhere with a distinctive setting, somewhere that we don't see on TV. At the time Miami Vice came out, it was groundbreaking, and part of it was it was fresh. It was the visuals of it. It was the setting. Where do we get that now? We don't really get a lot of that. Yeah. And people taking chances on in, in the format. I think you could have a cop show, a crime show, but uh, where's the the breakthrough in like the design and the, the aesthetic of it? You could start a whole franchise. You could just you know, just like the NCIS. The city would be first in the name. Right, right. <laughs> you know, Toledo Vice. Right, right. <laughs> Wichita Vice. Right. Uh, Sheboygan Vice. Sheboygan yeah. Vice, yeah. yeah. But get some visionary, uh, somebody with a vision to yeah. give the, the show a unique look and give us something we're not seeing all over the place on TV right now and, you know, spend some money on it and you could do it. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's kind of wor- more where I'm coming from as opposed to necessarily having a guy named Crockett and a guy named Tubbs, right. you know, do things and go undercover and all that. But yeah. I think I think there's something there maybe. Yeah. Okay, next, uh, I, got, I got a couple of shows that we talked about early on in our run mm-hmm. that I think... You might, we might be able to do White Shadow. Nowadays, uh, and this was, would cause tensions, but for a while there, it seemed like, okay, white uh, coach and black kids and yeah. social problems. Oh, it doesn't that seem quaint. Well, it doesn't seem quaint anymore. It seems like that would actually be pretty relevant. Mm-hmm. It would probably be hard to, to do it as light as as you would then. I mean, you'd have to be pretty serious in some respects, but yeah. I think you could do it. And it seems like we're always talking about like football shows, but we need more basketball shows on the air. Right. So, <laughs> I'd kind of like to see somebody try something like the White Shadow again. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be – you would lose the title, but it doesn't have to be a white guy. <laughs> no. It just could be a, a basketball show. True. Well, I mean, the same idea of a pro becoming a coach and that. Right. I, th- I think now if, if – I think what I would do is um, if I were making – I'd try to emphasize the, the racial aspects of it. And tr- like and where we are like right now when we record this, I mean, it seems like race is coming back to the forefront. And mm-hmm. I think maybe take a – a serious approach and, and focus more on that and actually talk about that and get more stories from that and just kind of like go aggressively at it, I think would make an interesting show. Might not, maybe not a commercial show, but right. it'd be an interesting show to me, I think. Okay. Uh, the other show that we talked about is The Hulk. Ah, yeah. This might might uh, surprise you, but look at a lot of the superhero shows now. Uh, and one thing I'm always complaining about is there has to be like a big bad, like all season yeah. has to gear up towards something. Right. I like the old, uh, and we talked about this, I like the old like semi-anthology format where you have one character who wanders around and meets different people. Yeah. The Fugitive, you know, uh, you know, Run for Your Life, the Hulk, the, you know. And yes, Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno are iconic, but the Hulk itself is a character that has been done by many people. I think you could pull it off and have somebody else be, be both characters probably this time. But I, I would like the idea of, of a superhero show with that format with one person... Um, going around wandering and, and meeting different people. Now you'd have different challenges on the one hand uh, for the character. He would have more technology available to him, like cell phones and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, it would be harder for him to keep his identity a secret in the same ro- world. So yeah. to me, I think that gives enough of a differences that you could do like a fresh take on it. And, and mainly I like the idea of plugging it in, just doing something different with that format. And he, granted right now you've got the, the movies and the Avengers franchise, but you know, once this kind of dies down, why not give it a shot on like a Netflix or something, do a Hulk series? I certainly like the general part of that idea of the uh, of doing a superhero show that's more anthology based, mm-hmm. and not that doesn't have a support team and all that kind of stuff. Right. That, yeah. That's the other thing. I'm and glad I, you mentioned I, that. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like Marvel is very that their whole movie TV thing is a little weird. Mm. Like it's supposed to be the same universe, and yet they don't, the TV, the movies ignore the TV shows. Yeah. 
So, uh, which I understand. I don't, I mean, I don't really, I'm not yeah. overly bothered. Or DC is like, yeah, we'll have 18 versions of Flash. We don't right. care. Right. We have animated versions and we have, we're making a movie, but we have a TV version. <laughs> right. We don't care if it's, and we're going to make two Joker movies that have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know which uh, way is the better way. I'm sure there are a lot of heroes you could fit into that model. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, like he's a good example of someone who has to keep his identity secret or he could get into some real trouble. Right. Whereas, you know, some of these other characters, as you see on these shows and it, now, it's like less important than yeah. to keep their identity. You know, the cell phone thing is interesting. Like you constantly have to be buying burner phones. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the idea of a loner superhero. Yeah. Like everybody, like even Daredevil and the Marvel, you know, has a core of people that help him. And, right. And, just the idea of, of somebody being totally by himself yeah, uh, is not something you really see that much right. these days. So And putting them on the road yeah, kind of enforces that in yeah. a way that, like the Marvel ones that are on Netflix, I, I, I think, I guess one of the outcomes of the Defenders is they each have a, like an area of New York that's their area to sort of protect, mm. uh, sort of. But <laughs> that does mean they have support or, or they're not going that far out of their that area. Right. All the DC shows are firmly grounded in specific settings, except, I mean, yeah. Legends of... Tomorrow is, a, is an ex- obvious exception. Right, yeah. Why not have one where with somebody that doesn't have any roots, yeah. but instead of going through time and space, he's going through the United States? Yeah. Or she, you know, maybe she, she, do a She-Hulk uh, like that or something. Yeah. I don't know. But. I, f- I think there were rumors of a She-Hulk show. Yeah, uh, based with a, like a, the legal element? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Like, I think recently, yeah. you know, in the last few years, uh, there was one. There were some rumors about that. Well, that was, uh, that's, that's, I, I've got... Uh, Two more that I'm going to put together, and that these are my, my last ideas for okay. possible reboots. Now, I'm not optimistic about these working, but yeah, um, I like like the concepts, and maybe I'm just more nostalgic for the fact that these kind of shows aren't around. Love Boat and Fantasy Island, yeah, shows that we talked about before. They're paired together. You get celebrities. Now, the, while the cast of Love Boat and Fantasy Island are iconic in their own ways, they've got the, that certain level of celebrity where I think you could probably do it without totally making people upset now geez we had what robert urich tried to remake the love boat yeah. already right yeah fantasy island malcolm mcdowell tried to remake that yep basically i just like the concept of this sort of lighthearted anthology yeah where you have different people coming into this setting and, and different things happening each week and, and I, i'd like to see more of that and i'm surprised i mean we've got like certain anthology shows but they're more like genre on antho- anthology shows right. now and it's more like an anthology in the sense that each season is a new idea right oh, oh yeah yeah I'm thinking of like more like the FX shows. Yeah, uh, I was thinking more like Black Mirror and shows where oh yeah, yeah, you have like the title is the same, but you don't have the same characters recurring. Right. I'm saying like a Twilight Zone. Kind right. Of yeah, feel. Let's yeah. give a, a, a there's there's some kind of structure and people uh, coming in and out, but but yeah. different things happening and you have different guest stars now. Part of the thing is we don't have the same kind of celebrities that we did back then. Maybe right. uh, I would question how that would work, but it's something that I would consider doing. Yeah. I, why do I have a feeling that somebody like Seth MacFarlane would like to do that or something? And, uh, and I'm not sure what he'd do with it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But I don't know about his that. His next dream project is going to be a love boat. <laughs> yeah. Remake. Maybe he would be earnest about that the way he is about, yeah. uh, you know, torch songs. Yeah. Or, the, <laughs> or maybe he, I could see him doing like a Fantasy Island uh, remake with him as, as Mr. Rourke. Yeah. And like uh, being all like uh, charming and suave. Yeah, yeah. So the only idea I had uh, while we were talking, I don't know why I didn't really think about ideas, but I didn't. Maybe because I'm generally opposed. Yeah, <laughs> to this oh, concept. I should say, yeah, I, I generally am too, and I've yeah. tried to establish some parameters that that I yeah. think make it acceptable. But right, I don't mind like the continuation ones or the return kind of things. I don't. I haven't watched many of those, but like I watched the Twin Peaks one, and I liked that. Mm-hmm. But that clearly was just continuing the story. Yeah. I don't know about like Murphy Brown. I don't. I watched that for a while when it was on, but I mm-hmm. don't know that I really need to see more Murphy Brown. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of these shows I was never like Will and Grace. I never watched that to begin yeah. with. Murphy Brown, I didn't watch it to begin with. So right. Like, there's talk about Frasier, which I think is a terrible idea. Yeah. Just I, let it be. Yeah. So one I had was uh, that we talked about was Sandbaggers. You know what? That that's interesting. I was just just thinking about that. I think that's. Uh, I mean, why not? Espionage is obviously part of the pop culture again, mm-hmm. and I mean, Homeland tried to, for a little while to do a more realistic version of that, but they got off the rails pretty quickly. Yeah, and, you know, I don't think Twenty Four was 
too grounded in reality. Plus one, I would like to see, again, like a thing that's not action-y. That's... Right, but about the politics of it and the yeah. bureaucracy right. and the, the, the pressures of the job. and Yeah, and you look at sort of the discussions about the intelligence community here going on right mm-hmm. now. The politics must be more complicated in a way. Yeah. There's a movie of Queen and Country, the comics that we talked about that, uh, you know, are, are an homage to the sandbaggers. And, I mean, it seems like that is actually happening. I'm not sure, but like mm-hmm. Ridley Scott's involved and, but there have been, this is like a third or fourth time yeah. that's been gonna, uh, slated to happen. So, well, you have a lot of leeway with that concept. I mean, like 24 basically did, okay, well, here's CTU, you know, the yeah. counterterrorism unit. I mean, you could make up your own agency, right? You could do that in the United States or you could do it in England. Yeah. I, I think that's, that sounds pretty good. I, th- I think that would definitely work. I would like to see it maybe cover more than one topic, like 24 and Homeland are pretty much right. Terrorism. Yeah. That that's the topic. And, and something else could, that could be one of the things they deal with. But right. That's not the only thing going on. So I think that could work. Yeah. I, I like that idea very much. I think that would, that's a good one. And get some good actors. Especially if you did it in England, you could get yeah good actors for, do a short run like the original was. Yeah. Um, seems very doable. Yeah. And with, you know, the semi interchangeable nature of the characters you yes could, you could shuffle people in and out pretty easily and have a little bit bigger budget this time and yeah but not too much you're right <laughs> yeah that's a good one all right well this is a good discussion we're glad that people joined in on the facebook group to do that again if you're interested in those kind of discussions join the facebook group and offer your own ideas and things like this join us next time for another exciting episode of battle of the network shows learn more leave feedback and suggest future episodes at BattleTheNetworkShows.com. Follow us on Twitter at BatNetShows, and like our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash BattleTheNetworkShows.